Hello, Theory of Knowledge students, uh, Phil353 students. This is Neil Fight, uh, the guy who used to stand in front of the room in Dodds 102, coming at you from my, uh, my study in my pajamas. This is um, going to be for our class that was uh, you know, originally scheduled for Tuesday, March 24th. So this is a, uh, a bit of a video on Cartesian foundationalism. And you could see this is part of uh, the reading for for Tuesday, March 24th on chapter 4, pages uh, 52 to 60. And um, I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to make uh, these slides available to you as well. And there's also a handout 11, which is going to you know, has some of the stuff here if you want you know quicker paper copies of all this stuff. So we're going to talk about an evidentialist theory of uh, justification or justified belief today. And evidentialist in the sense that um, the idea is that uh, your, your being justified in holding a belief is a matter of your evidence, which is mental states that are accessible to you or available to you. And it's, it's based on the work of René Descartes. You can see a little uh, beautiful portrait of him here. And um, it's hard to, to dig into Descartes' work, especially his, uh, his meditations, and uh, extract this view that we're going to call Cartesian foundationalism precisely. But it is sort of lurking below the surface in a lot of what he says in the meditations. So, um, in uh, two class days, so two videos from now, I'm going to talk about another version of foundationalism called modest foundationalism. And some of the problems that are going to arise today for the Cartesian version are going to motivate this other version. And we're going to, we're going to think about um, another perspective, another type of theory in between these two versions of foundationalism. So, if you remember our uh, infinite regress argument, the infinite regress argument concluded that there are justified basic beliefs, uh, beliefs that are justified, but are not justified on the basis of other beliefs. Okay, So um, this version of, of foundationalism is going to accept this claim, like all versions of foundationalism. Let's call this F1. So there are JBBs, justified basic beliefs. And uh, again, this was the conclusion of the infinite regress argument. And the idea, roughly, uh, to review that is, if there are no justified basic beliefs, then uh, either there are no justified beliefs at all. Uh, either a, a justified belief can be justified by an unjustified belief, which seems wrong. Or we could have an infinite regress of justified beliefs, which seems wrong because it's psychologically impossible. Or justification could be circular, which seems wrong because uh, it seems like there's nowhere to provide justification to begin with. Okay, So the justified basic beliefs are, are the foundation. And F2 says that all justified non-basic beliefs, again, sometimes these are called um, inferential beliefs, they're justified in virtue of their relations to the basic ones, the JBBs. Any version of foundationalism has got to answer these three questions. Okay, Which beliefs count as basic, justified basic beliefs? Um, how are they justified, the basic ones? And what sorts of relations or connections must a non-basic belief have to justified basic beliefs in order to be justified. And uh, this should be obvious, but you can pause this at any time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be fairly quick just to keep this, I'm, I'm ballparking it here, under a half an hour. And I'll come back to these questions. OK, so we're going to be discussing this view. Cartesian is the uh, adjective form of Descartes, for those of you who didn't know that. So this is a version of foundationalism based upon uh, the work of René Descartes, especially in his book, uh, The Meditations, first published in 1641. And remember, that first question was, um, which beliefs count as justified basic beliefs? So CF1, the first claim of Cartesian foundationalism, says that beliefs about our own inner states of mind, we're going to call these appearance beliefs, and beliefs about elementary truths of logic are justified basic beliefs. Beliefs about your inner states of mind are beliefs about the, the current contents of your own mind, um, how things visually seem to you, how you're feeling, uh, what sorts of memories you might be having um, currently, and so forth. Um, beliefs about elementary truths of logic, uh, we don't really have to go into those too much, but they're beliefs of the form, you know, if P, then P, uh, or if two things are true, if P and Q are both true, then P is, is true all by itself, these sorts of things. And maybe elementary truths about arithmetic and geometry, Descartes would also want to say, are justified basic beliefs. Um, 
If you ever look at handout 11, this is, uh, is below the, the all three claims of Cartesian foundationalism, and I realize it might be a little hard to see depending upon your device, but I have a list here of um, appearance beliefs on the left. These are basic beliefs for Descartes. Um, I seem to see a tree is one of these. Um, another way of saying this would be something like, I have a tree-like -like or, or tree-shaped visual image. You know, I have a tree-shaped image. Descartes would say something like, I have a tree idea. Okay. Um, contrast that with what's on the right. I see a tree. Okay. And there's a big important difference between these two beliefs. It's going to be problematic for this, uh, this version of foundationalism, um, which if you did the reading, you might uh, remember. Okay. Um, it seems quite possible for you to seem to see a tree, but not actually see a tree, for the reasons that we've talked about when we were talking about skepticism. You might be uh, hallucinating or dreaming, or uh, even in a, in a more far-out skeptical scenario, such as uh, being a brain in a vat, or a disembodied mind being deceived by Descartes' evil demon or evil genius. Um, the second one, appearance belief. I'm experiencing pain. This would be a belief that we're going to call an appearance belief. It's a belief about one's own inner state of mind. Um, contrast that with an external world belief on the right. My skin was burned on the stove. Okay, That's a belief that entails that you have skin and that you were near a stove. So uh, you know that's, that's not a belief that's only about your inner state of mind. I seem to recall watching TV last night. That would be an appearance belief, or I seem to remember watching TV, uh, TV last night, or, or I have a memory as of watching TV last night. Contrast that with the one on the right, I watched TV last night. I'm thinking of a pink elephant, you know? That's an appearance belief. Um, I have a pink elephant idea, versus uh, my mom loved me, loves me. That would be an external world belief. Okay, so these are the kinds of things on the left-hand side that Cartesian foundationalism counts as uh, justified basic beliefs. Why are they justified? Well, that's what CF2 tells us. They're justified because we can't be mistaken about them. We are infallible about such matters. Um, our discussion of skepticism might, you know, kind of be helpful here. The idea here is, if you have an appearance belief, it's not possible for you to have that belief uh, and for it to be false. You know, if you have that belief, it's guaranteed to be true. Okay, it's infallible. Your, your evidence for it, which is basically the experience that you have in your mind, is a uh, guaranteeing the truth of your belief. If you seem to see a tree, um, if you believe that you seem to see a tree, then you do seem to see a tree. So these are the sorts of beliefs that are immune from skeptical doubt. We're certain about them. We can't doubt them. Their truth. Uh, we have um, infallible evidence for them. What about non-basic beliefs? Okay. Um, the idea here is that the rest of our justified beliefs, for example, beliefs about the external world, ordinary everyday beliefs about what's going on in our environment, these are justified because they can be deduced from our justified basic beliefs. Okay, I have a little note about this on the handout. I'll show it to you right here. Deduction is the same as a uh, you know, logical validity. Okay, so a belief can be deduced from JBBs or justified basic beliefs if and only if it's a logical consequence of the JBBs. What that means is, in other words, the argument from the, the JBB premises to the conclusion belief needs to be valid. Okay, So one belief can be deduced from others if the others, when, when you take them as premises, um, form a valid argument to the conclusion, which is the, the belief in question. Okay, This is going to be kind of important later on, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to it when we talk about some objections to Cartesian foundationalism. Speaking of which, um, Feldman, in this part of the uh, this section of, of chapter 4, discusses three main objections to uh, Cartesian foundationalism, and they, they're sort of more important as they go along. So our objection number one, you could see it kind of in the middle of the screen here, we're not infallible about our own mental states. Some people claim that uh, this is the case, we're not infallible about our mental states. So this would be an objection to CF2. The, the claim that we're, we're justified in our basic beliefs because we can't be mistaken about them. So if this objection is correct, um, it shows that, at, at the very least, this theory needs another explanation of how our justified basic beliefs are justified. It, it can't be because we can't be mistaken about them. Okay, At the bottom of the screen, to add a little bit of more flesh to the bone, 
Um, there are examples that seem to show that we can be mistaken, that is, we are fallible, about our mental states. You can believe that you're in a mental state, S, when in fact you're not. And I'm going to read to you example 4.8, uh, the frying pan example. This is on page 55. So here, in this example, you're walking toward a counter that has an electric frying pan on it. You have just been told to be careful of the pan because it's very hot. As you approach the counter, you trip and put your hand out to stop your fall. Your hand, unfortunately, comes down right on the pan. You immediately pulling away, thinking, I'm now having a sensation of extreme heat. In fact, as you soon realize, the pan is actually not on. You did not feel heat at all. And Feldman goes on to say, it is alleged that in this sort of example, you believe that you're having a sensation of extreme heat, which is a belief about your own current mental states. It's an appearance belief, but it's false. You're not, in fact, having a sensation of extreme heat. So the idea here is um, we could believe that we're having certain sensations um, when, in fact, we're not actually having those sensations. And if that's the case, then we're not infallible about at least some of our appearance beliefs. How then could we justified, be justified in believing them? Now, someone might say um, that maybe, maybe you were having an, a sensation of extreme heat even though you touched sort of a room temperature frying pan. Maybe your expectations can really affect your sensations in this way. So maybe the Cartesian foundationalist would sort of have some sort of objection here. Um, but uh, if you know anything about Sigmund Freud, and I'm not going to go into it, he he uh, maybe had some wild theories, but he seemed to have some evidence that we do have um, um, mental states that we we could be wrong about. You know, we could believe that we desire one thing when in fact we, we really don't and we desire another thing. Okay, so again, something to worry about, but maybe there's even more decisive objections to the theory to come. Here's the second one. Um, the basic objection is in the middle of the screen. Beliefs about our inner mental states are uncommon. Okay. If this objection is correct, um, we very rarely even have the sorts of beliefs that we would need to have in order to be justified in holding ordinary everyday beliefs. Take a look at the little description of the objection down at the bottom. If you're crossing the street and you see a truck coming at you, the idea here is, according to this objection, don't you just form the belief that a truck is coming? Do you really have the belief that you seem to see a truck coming at you first, and then deduce that there is a truck coming at you? That seems to many people to be psychologically unrealistic. And yet, if you think about it, the belief about the truck itself would have to be um, derived from a belief about your inner state of mind, an appearance belief that you seem to see a truck. So if you don't have that first belief about your seeming to see a truck, then this theory is going to have a, a very hard time explaining how you could even be justified in believing that you see a truck. Okay, um, don't worry too much about this, but I'm going to give you a little argument here. If Cartesian foundationalism is true, then my belief about the truck is not justified. You might think about how we were going to explain that premise. I'm going to show you. Well, my belief about the truck, you know, that the truck is coming at me, that's not an appearance belief. That's an external world belief. So for it to be justified, I would need to be a belief that I seem to see a truck. I would need to believe that I seem to see a truck. You know, um, the only way a, uh, a non-basic belief could be justified is if it is deducible from an appearance belief. I seem to see a truck. But the idea here is I, I just don't have such a belief. I don't first believe that I seem to see a truck and then believe, oh, I see a truck. But my belief about the truck is justified. We are working here within sort of a, a common sense, non-skeptical, standard view kind of framework. So, you know, maybe skeptics would, would say, oh, no, that premise is false, you know. But what I'm doing here is I'm trying to work within the standard view, the ideas that we do have a lot of knowledge and hence a lot of justified beliefs about the world around us. So Cartesian foundationalism is not true. If you want to compare this, this is sort of a very similar argument to... Um, argument 4.2 on page 57 of our book, the argument called uh, the beliefs about inner states are rare argument. Okay. Um, now, there is a philosopher named Timothy McGrew, contemporary epistemologist, 
who would de deny premise one here? He says, he says that we really do have appearance beliefs. You know, when you believe that there's a truck, he says, you really do believe that you seem to see a truck. It's just maybe it's not a, not a conscious belief. It's a non-conscious belief. So maybe Cartesian foundationalists could say something along those lines in response to this objection. I leave it to you to think about whether that's a plausible response here. Okay, this objection, number three, is probably the strongest. I'm going to spend the most time on it. Um, according to Feldman, he says it's the most decisive one. So the idea here is, even if I did believe that I seem to see a truck, and then drew the conclusion that I see a truck, the idea is that uh, Cartesian foundationalism in claim CF3 doesn't let me be justified in believing that I see a truck. And the idea here in a nutshell is that deduction is too restrictive in, uh, in being the only way that we're allowed to, to draw non-basic justified beliefs from our justified basic beliefs. Okay, And you could read the nutshell version of this on the bottom. Um, external world beliefs simply cannot be deduced from appearance beliefs. For example, it's possible for the belief that I seem to, to see a tree to be true, while the belief that I do see a tree is false. So Cartesian foundationalism severely restricts the scope of human knowledge. Let me say just a tiny bit here. You could read about this on page 54 to 55 if you want. Um, Descartes himself was aware of this problem, and um, he brought God into the picture here. So basically, um, and I'm not really going to go into his arguments. This is like in the third, fourth, fifth meditations uh, of, of his book, The Meditations. You know, according to Descartes, uh, he claimed that certain elementary truths of logic, um, broadly speaking logic, um, certain a priori beliefs, um, let him decisively, conclusively prove God's existence. And the, the idea was that he had a clear and distinct idea of God, and that the, the, the source of an idea must have as, as much reality in a certain sense as the idea itself. So he, he proved that God exists, and that God is no deceiver. So Descartes thought if, if you seem to see a tree clearly and distinctly, you could add to that the premise that God exists, and the premise that God is not a deceiver, and you could kind of deduce that you do, in fact, see a tree. Okay, um, not very many contemporary philosophers find this to be um, a good way to supplement Cartesian foundationalism. Forgetting about the the argument for God's existence, um, not many contemporary philosophers are persuaded that number one, this is a a persuasive kind of argument for God's existence, and number two, that it helps De Cartesian foundationalism solve the problem here. But that's how Descartes tried to do it. Um, I'm going to suppose that that is ultimately uh, unsuccessful, that, that Descartes could not prove God's existence just from the fact that he had a, a certain idea of God as a perfect being or something like that. Okay, so do you remember the thievery example? This is from page 39 if you want to go pause and take a look. But we have an officer, a police officer, Officer Careful, there he is at the bottom, who has a lot of evidence for the claim that Filcher stole the painting, the claim in red, the belief in red at the bottom here. And if you want to pause and go through the chain of reasoning here, that's fine. Um, I'm going to look at those beliefs uh, just above the, the conclusion there that Filcher stole a painting. So, um, Officer Careful is in uh, Art's house. Art is the um, possessor, the owner of the painting. So Officer Careful is thinking, I see a painting. The painting that I see belongs to Art, and I'm in Filcher's house. So he draws the conclusion that Filcher stole the painting. And he's got some other evidence, too. We could look at that later. Okay. In a nutshell, those three beliefs in black, above the belief in red that Filcher stole the painting, they do not deductively entail um, that belief at the bottom. Okay, that belief in the bottom simply cannot be deduced from the three beliefs above it. The inference is, in a nutshell, inductive rather than deductive. Deduction is too restrictive. Okay, don't worry about these careful arguments. I'm just trying to kind of make a, a general point here, and I'll I'll lay a more general argument at you in a, just a couple of minutes. Okay, uh, very simple argument. If Cartesian foundationalism is true, 
then careful is not justified in believing that Filcher stole the painting, but quite clearly he is justified in believing this, so the theory is not true. Okay, premise one is explainable, something like this. Um, Officer Careful's inference, it, it's inductive, not deductive. His conclusion simply cannot be deduced from his evidence, let alone from his appearance beliefs. Uh, it's possible for his final belief, that one in red, his conclusion that uh, Filcher stole the painting, to be false, even if his prior beliefs are true. Filcher might have been framed. So, for example, he might. it might be true that he's in Art's house. It might be true that um, the painting is in Art's house and that he sees it. Uh, still, it might not have been Filcher who uh, stole the painting. Someone else might have stolen it and placed it in Art's house with Filcher's fingerprints on it. Okay. Um, this is something that's, that's kind of important here, the concept of, of what it is to deduce something. And here's a little uh, image from page 60 of, of our textbook to say that um, external world propositions can be deduced from the appearance propositions is to say that it's not even possible for the appearance ones to be true while the external world ones are false. Okay, so in other words, it, to, to say that one proposition can be deduced from others is to say that the argument is valid. You know, it's not possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. And, you know, in this, we're using the thievery example here, it is possible. It's possible to have a dream or a hallucination in which you have experiences just like those that you have and therefore appearance beliefs with the um, external world beliefs being false. Okay, so I want to have you look at um, Officer Careful's uh, thought bubble again. Okay, instead of focusing on this proposition at the bottom in red, let's focus on that one. I see a painting. Okay, that's a real simple external world belief, okay? The problem is even more severe. Cartesian foundationalism doesn't even let those kinds of beliefs become justified, okay? Um, look at the ones above that. I seem to see a painting, okay? Um, and some others. Um, does the belief that I seem to see a painting justify the belief that I see a painting? Well, on this theoretical perspective, only if uh, you can deduce the red one from the one on top. And that simply can't be done. So here's a second careful argument. If this theory is true, careful is not even justified in believing that he sees a painting, let alone that Filcher stole it. But he is justified, so the theory is not true. Okay, here, the same explanation for premise one applies. It's simply possible for careful's appearance belief that he seems to see a painting to be true, while his external world belief that he actually sees a painting is false. Okay, again, he could be dreaming, he could be hallucinating, he could be um, a brain in a vat. It's possible for the appearance belief to be true, his senses could be deceiving him, while the external one is false. Okay, so here's a more general argument that kind of summarizes this, uh, this objection number three, the, dis the deduction is too restrictive argument. Okay, um, let's see sort of looking at my textbook here. He doesn't give us a formal argument here. Okay. If Cartesian foundationalism is true, according to this argument, then external world beliefs are justified only if they can be deduced from appearance beliefs. This simply follows, this, this premise is true, and it's true because of what Cartesian foundationalism says. Okay. Um, according to uh, CF1, appearance beliefs are justified basic beliefs, and those are the only ones besides elementary truths of logic. Okay, um, and according to CF3, the rest of our justified beliefs, including beliefs about the external world, these are justified only if they can be deduced from experience ones, from uh, appearance beliefs. But they cannot be deduced, and this is for the reasons that we've been talking about, or at least I've been talking about, uh, using the, uh, the officer careful uh, thievery example. Um, if you add to this the premise that external world beliefs are sometimes justified, okay, uh, again, maybe an external world skeptic is going to reject this. But if we want to take the common sense anti-skeptical position that we do have some knowledge of the world around us, you know, um, we know that uh, we can't come to our classroom anymore for the rest of this semester, blah, 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 um, we get the valid conclusion that this theory is not true. 
Um, I hope you pause and kind of let the logical structure of this argument sink in. This is a deductively valid argument. Okay, um, if all the premises are true, then this is not a true theory of, of epistemic justification, Cartesian foundationalism. Seems to be a pretty convincing argument that this theory is not true. Okay, um, well, looks like I'm going to get this in right about 25 minutes. That's cool. Um, our next little topic in class is uh, going to be a contemporary version of, um, of evidentialism that we're going to call coherentism. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at another sort of non-foundationalist theory of justification, and then next time, um, that next time is a uh, sort of two times from now, two videos from now, we're gonna return to a, a more contemporary version of foundationalism that diverges from Descartes' view in two ways. We're gonna call that one um, modest foundationalism. Okay, but again, signing off for now. Until uh, I'm back with you on the. Uh, evidentialist theory of epistemic justification called coherentism.